Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather. And first of all, Happy New Year. Thanks to everybody who tunes in here and watches these videos. Big powder day in Colorado. This was the last of this historic storm cycle to move through Colorado. But first, I want to start down in New Mexico. 16 inches at Taos here in the last 24 hours. You can still see a little bit of that snow coming down. This is outstanding to see. It had been dry in Taos and Ski Santa Fe and Angel Fire for so long. It's just awesome to see that. Up in Jackson, look at this, beautiful on the north side of this final storm system. Um, the blue skies are coming out. It looks, looks like a little bit uh, a little bit of wind kind of blowing some of the residual cloud cover around. But, I mean, that is just spectacular of Cody Bowl and Cody Peak up there. Uh, looks like you got about four inches in the last 24 hours. Um, into Colorado, this is Loveland. Loveland, I made some notes here. Um, you have a storm total, a nine-day storm total of 44 inches, so over three feet. Uh, it's been outstanding, this, this storm cycle for Colorado. The view at Loveland is good. You had 10 inches in the last 24 hours. Down to Crested Butte, a view down there. Finally, the storm has broken, and it looks like brighter skies down there at Crested Butte. Crested Butte is a very interesting story, and I've been writing a lot about this on my blog. Um, so far, the nine-day storm cycle total there in Crested Butte is 99 inches, right at about 100 inches. We'll see if there's any residual snow that falls today and, and pulls you over that 100-inch mark. Um, but amazing amounts of snow water equivalent out of this of over 14 inches of water. Uh, I mean, that is, that was, that's more than what occurred back in January 2017 during the Bury the Butte storm cycle. I mean, this was a big deal over parts of the West Elks. Um, Wolf Creek, I don't have a can for Wolf Creek, but Wolf Creek got another foot. Another 14, in fact, and you're at 118 inches, uh, the storm cycle total down there over Wolf Creek in southern Colorado. Let me show you what's going on here and what lies ahead. That's what this is a, a lot about is what lies ahead now that we're in January. Um, and so let me just put some features on here. Let me just show you the storm track, and this is going to be important. So it's basically coming up and over, and then there's a very large dip in the jet happening up here, a large trough developing and there's a low up there and then what's obviously happening is this dip over Colorado escorting and Taos and New Mexico escorting the storm out but this and I'm going to change this I'm going to show you what I'm looking at there's a very large area of low pressure here there's obviously more action back here in some form riding up over the top I can't draw it because of the box but riding up and over that will spill into this trough this trough is really the key it's, um, you know, we had this large trough that just translated through the west over the last nine to ten days. Well, there's another large trough. That's what this is, this dip in the jet stream. And what will happen is the, let me just clear all this out. What will happen is it's going to start to nail the British Columbia, the, um, the coastal range, uh, the Pacific Northwest, Oregon, Northern California, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and parts of interior BC and western Alberta. This where I'm marking will become the hot spot for the biggest snow for the next probably five days. And then um, I'd say on the fourth or later, we're going to start to see the curtain drop down just a little bit into Utah and into the central and northern mountains of Colorado. And then that snow will begin to affect those areas. So that's kind of the timeline for this. Let me talk about and let me show you what the future position of some of this is going to be, the potential on the GFS here. Um, so there goes the storm out of New Mexico and Colorado. By Sunday morning, it's dry through the four corners, dry through the interior. Look at the Pacific Northwest. That's the beginning stages of what I was showing you. And then it just intensifies. And that is some serious snowfall um, through the Cascades, the high volcanoes, Oregon, B.C., and some of that will blow into the interior through Banff and B.C. Um, and look at that heavy band move into Oregon and then into Shasta. So this is Tuesday morning. Let me take you back to Monday morning. I might have skipped that. So there's Monday morning. There's Tuesday morning. And look what happens is that snow moves into Idaho, Schweitzer, Brundage, into um, parts of Montana, and then affects the Tetons by late Monday into Tuesday morning. So Tuesday morning, snowing there in the Wasatch, the Tetons, and then the storm begins to affect parts of Colorado. Um, you can see some of the blue, light blue, I-70 North, but really there's a little kicker. There's a little extra energy that comes in here Wednesday into Thursday. Look at that in Colorado and another reinforcing surge of snow into the Wasatch and Tetons between Wednesday and Thursday. You can see that happening. So Colorado gets snow. Um, 
and there it is. You can see it affecting the state. And that's not it. There's another impulse. Look at the Pacific Northwest. See, all this is rotating into that trough of low pressure. That's why this is just one after the next. So let me take, there's Thursday morning, and then there's Friday morning. So there's a lot of action here to talk about for the interior after about a three-day break. Um, let me show you my totals in a two-time period. So basically all of today through the third. Um, so there's some leftover snow in Colorado. That's the numbers you see there. And then all of that will exit and move away. The big numbers you see in the Pacific Northwest from Shasta up to Bachelor, Timberline, Stevens, Baker, Whistler into the interior. That's all from that next trough of low pressure storm cycle beginning to set up and move into the Pacific Northwest. All right, so here is phase number two. Let me pull this up. And here it is. So basically the fourth through the tenth. So all those storms then begin to track into the interior. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten will move into the Wasatch, the Tetons, and into Colorado and bring big time numbers. You can see it. Basically, from Monarch North in Colorado through Crested Butte, Snowmass Aspen, I 70 North, we're talking one to two feet during that time frame. Um, and at least in between phase, let me take you back. So what I've got there is, okay, let's just look at this. So between the 4th through the 10th, I've got about 3 feet there at Jackson Hole. I think that's a minimum value, as I'm going to show you on my snow plume. Um, I think that the 3 foot is probably a minimum value. I think it could be 4 feet in Jackson Hole. I've got a couple of feet there over Alta, Snowbird, Park City, Brighton Solitude. Big time snow through Brundage. Nice snows up there in Big Sky, Schweitzer, and obviously big time totals up in the Pacific Northwest. Here's my plume for Jackson Hole. Um, so significant accumulation in the acceleration here on the curve through four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, we're pushing 40 to 50 inches, I think, at Jackson Hole in the Tetons. So that's what is lying ahead here in the forecast after a little bit of a break across the Intermountain West. The next storm cycle moves in. Thank you for tuning in here. Always appreciate it, guys. Have a great New Year's. Take care.